पीपल इन दिस वीडियो वी वॉन्ट टू लुक एट टॉक्सोप्लास्मा टॉक्सोप्लास्मा इज एक्चुअली अ प्रोटोजोवन विच कम्स अंडर द फाइल अपी कॉम्प्लेक्सा कॉक्सीडिया सो टॉक्सोप्लास्मा इज ऑल्सो कॉल्ड एज टॉक्सोप्लास्मा गोंडी ओके इट इज द मोस्ट कॉमन protozoan parasite can you imagine it is the most common protozoan parasite you have seen in parasites that we have protozoans fungi helminths in the protozoans the most common is toxoplasma the definitive host is a cat any cat family animal and uh, intermediate host will be man okay so basically in the cat whatever happens is called as the enteric cycle it happens in the cat's intestine it the cat can infect man the intermediate host is man it is exoenteric cycle but man is actually dead end host but a mother can transmit it to her fetus okay so is this much clear about toxoplasma gondii what did you understand it is a protozoan parasite it's the most common protozoan parasite the definitive host is here is a cat cat family animals and the intermediate host is man where you have the exoenteric cycle so basically man is dead end but mother can transmit to fetus causing congenital toxoplasmosis so to toxoplasma gondii causes what toxoplasmosis now why is this name toxoplasma toxon means arc these are actually comma shaped uh, they look like crescent shaped protozoans they were first seen in this uh, rodent called gondii hence these arc uh, plasma gondii right so basically it is an obligate intracellular coccidian parasite it is intracellular okay obligate intracellular so basically you can see here it is crescent shaped so crescent means moon right so you can see here they are actually moon shaped they are crescent shaped and um, they are obligate intracellular there are three forms trophozoite form tissue cyst form and oocyst form this is the trophozoite form it's also called as a tachyzoite this is a tissue cyst it is a tissue cyst and this is a oocyst oocyst is thick walled now you can see here that this uh, trophozoite which is also called as a tachyzoite it is crescent shaped okay so basically the one that is infective man infective to man is the sporulated oocyst sporulated oocyst is actually have is a oocyst which contains two sporocysts there are two sporocysts with sporozoites inside these are sporozoites okay so this is actually seen only in the cat and from the cat they come to us and they infect us okay how do they infect through food so the mode of infection of toxoplasma human infection occurs because of ingestion of food containing this containing oocyst or tissue cyst okay congenital infection also can occur from mother to fetus so did you understand how man gets this uh, toxoplasmosis basically from food that is infected with these oocysts or the tissue cyst and from a mother to the fetus okay those are the two modes of transmission of toxoplasma what are the clinical features usually it will be asymptomatic as usual we will say uh, for all everything the starting we will say is usually it is asymptomatic however this can affect the brain so there can be acute encephalopathy fever all these small small things you have to write fever acute encephalopathy chorioretinitis so this will be the eye effects so that is will really what you will call as a ocular toxoplasmosis chorioretinitis right then you have lymphadenopathy myocarditis can you imagine it affects the brain the lung uh, sorry brain and the heart it affects the liver hepatosplenomegaly it affects the spleen so what and all is it affecting the brain the heart the liver the spleen main thing here you have to know is in a person who's immunocompromised like in aids where the person is having acquired immune immunodeficiency syndrome he's immunosuppressed so this person can have a, he can get a toxoplasma infection either by uh you know a recurrence within him or a fresh infection but this is a major fatal complication in aids uh, patients so be, remember it is a major fatal complication in aids uh, patients it involves the brain clinical manifestations will be encephalitis altered mental state seizures cerebellar signs meningismus neuropsychiatric manifestation so it is affecting the brain a lot and it can be fatal besides the central nervous system in these people it can affect the other organs like lung pancreas gastrointestinal tract eyes 
heart, liver. So you already know, you have studied this. It affects the brain, the heart, the liver. And here they are adding what? Lung, pancreas, gastrointestinal tract and AIDS patients. It can cause toxoplasma and pneumonia. So this uh, in AIDS patients, it can be a reactivation or it can be a new infection. Okay, but it is fatal. That's what you have to remember. It is one of the major fatal uh, complications. The most serious complication, fatal complication in AIDS patients can be this. Okay, major serious and fatal complication. Okay. So coming to congenital uh, toxoplasmosis, what do you see? Again, here you will write either it could be asymptomatic or the person can, uh, the child can have jaundice, fever, etc. But specific things you can write is chorioretinitis. That is an ocular manifestation. Brain, you can have cerebral calcification, convulsions, strabismus, deafness, blindness, mental retardation, microcephaly, hydrocephalus. So it looks very complicated uh, in um, a neonate. So that is why uh, they try to avoid uh, a cat as a pet with pregnant women. But however, if the cat is tested and uh, treated, it should be fine. So did you understand uh, the clinical features of toxoplasma gundi? That is toxoplasmosis, the disease. Okay. Now what is the treatment for toxoplasma? Uh, congenital infections are treated with uh, uh, pyrimethamine and sulfadiazine. For primary prophylaxis, for example, for AIDS patients whose lymphocyte count is really low, they can give trimethoprim and sulfamethoxazole. This is nothing but cotrimoxazole, correct? So in cotrimoxazole, you can go and add this word. It is used as primary prophylaxis for uh, toxoplasma infection, okay? So now we want to focus on the diagnosis of toxoplasma. You know the clinical features. Now if you want to ask the lab to... Uh, this person seems to have toxoplasma. Can you diagnose? How is the lab going to confirm that this guy has toxoplasma? Guys, wake up. We are looking at what now? The lab diagnosis of toxoplasma gondi. Okay. So basically, there are a few headings here. Microscopy, serodiagnosis, molecular diagnosis, imaging, and others. Okay. So here, you can see that in microscopy, you will try to find the tachyzoid or the cysts, right? Tissue cysts. Obviously, you will not find the oocysts. Oocysts are going to be in the cat. Coming to serodiagnosis, you will do antibody detection and antigen detection. Molecular diagnosis, PCR. Imaging, you know, MRI, CT, all these are imaging. Ultrasound for congenital uh, toxoplasmosis. Because, uh, you know, in congenital, what is there? In congenital, uh, you have seen that there will be microcephaly, hydrocephaly, so you can find out in ultrasound. Others, you have animal inoculation and skin test of Frenkel. Okay. So basically, in microscopy, what will you find? The tachyzoids, the tissue cysts, where will you detect them? In the blood, in the sputum, in the bone marrow aspirate, and also the cerebrospinal fluid, right? Because it is affecting the brain, right? Why didn't they write that? CSF. CSF also you can find amniotic fluid, amniotic fluid, biopsy from lymph node, so all these things you can use to detect the tachyzoids and tissue cysts, okay, you know that the oocysts will be there only in the cat family, so in us what will you see, only tachyzoids and tissue cysts, okay, the stains that we are going to use are gymsa stain, pass stain and GMS stain. Have you seen the photo with Jimsa stain? So a good thing to do at this time in if they ask lab diagnosis is to draw the diagram of the tachyzoid and the oocyst, right? You have you seen how you focused on the have you focused on this diagram? How to draw it if they ask? So draw one crescent shape like this, draw one nucleus here, draw one mitochondria here, then draw ropteri kind of things here cytosome Golgi body. So you'll have to draw this something like this. Okay, at least a comma shaped with a dot you draw. You know, one of the simplest diagrams to draw will be something like this. Comma shaped or a crescent shaped. Like this you draw a few and put a dot here. At least this much if you draw you will get some microscopy marks. Okay. Then this is thick wall tissue cyst. Remember to draw one circle and put some circles inside it with dots. That is tissue, uh, thick wall tissue cysts. Only these two you have to detect in microscopy. 
Now let us move on to sero diagnosis. Okay, sero diagnosis means you will detect the antibody or you can detect antigen, either of them. For antibody detection, you can use, uh, you can detect uh, IgM or IgG. IgM, let's put it first because that is the one that appears first, right? Okay, for IgM, let's try to highlight. For IgM, you will use double sandwich IgM ELISA or IgM ISAGA. What is that? Immunosorbent assay. Okay. That's all. Then you can detect IgG. For IgG, you can try ELISA indirect fluorescent antibody test, latex agglutination test and Sabin Fieldman dye test. We'll come to the details of Sabin Fieldman dye test. So just know for detecting IgG, you can use ELISA indirect fluorescent antibody test, latex agglutination test and Sabin Fieldman dye test. Okay. Now as you know, this, this there can be congenital toxoplasmosis. So you can also detect IgA. IgA where will you see in, in the breast milk, right? So for that you will use double sandwich IgA ELISA. So for, so for newborns they can do this test, okay? IgA test. They would have got it from the mother. What do you think? IgA. Antigen detection, uh, you can again detect uh, antigen in uh, by ELISA. So basically in AIDS and other immunocompromised patients, antigen detection is very useful. Okay, you can also detect the antigen in amniotic fluid to diagnose congenital toxoplasmosis. So now we are done with serodiagnosis. Guys, are you awake? So we have finished what and all. Microscopy and serodiagnosis are over. Now we are going to move to molecular diagnosis PCR. Before that, just take a look at what the Sabin Fieldman dye test is. Here you are going to stain the trophozoites with alkaline methylene blue dye okay that's all guys sabin fieldman dye test means at least know this you will stain the trophozoites okay but how is it antibody detection basically you're going to check the presence or absence of toxoplasma antibodies okay so specific inhibition by antibody staining of trophozoites by alkaline methylene blue dye that's all okay you will see whether Antibodies are present or absent. That's all. Okay. So Sabin Fieldman dye test. Where do you see Sabin Fieldman dye test? In uh, the lab diagnosis of Toxoplasma gondii. Remember that this in this you are detecting what? The IgG. Okay. For IgG you are using these tests. Sabin Fieldman dye test. Okay. Is it too much? Uh, is it becoming a little too much for you? Because micros, uh, the lab diagnosis is the main thing that they have asked in uh, toxoplasma. So just pay attention here. We'll finish it off very quickly now. Molecular diagnosis, PCR, you know. Imaging, MRI and CT scans, you will write, right? Not much to do there. And ultrasound scan to detect any uh, congenital toxoplasmosis. Coming to animal inoculation, you can do animal inoculation. And skin test of Frenkel. What is the skin test of Frenkel? Focus here on skin test of Frenkel. This is exactly same as all the skin tests you have seen so far. Intradermal injection of a very dilute purified toxoplasmin. Okay, you will inject intradermally and then you will see the delayed hypersensitivity reaction. These are not very reliable tests. Okay, animal inoculation you will do intra intraperitoneal uh, in inoculation uh, into the animal. So this is the lab diagnosis, how you will try to detect uh, lab diagnosis, uh, how will you how will you try to detect toxoplasma gondi. So if you suspect a person has toxoplasmosis, then you can do all these. Collect all the specimens like this, do microscopy, do antibody detection, antigen detection, molecular diagnosis, imaging, others, okay. So draw a nice diagram like this, okay. That's all for now in toxoplasma gondi. We will meet you in the next video. Take a quick recap. It's a protozoa, Apicomplexa, Corsidia, most common protozoan parasite, definitive host is cat family, enteric cycle, intermediate host is man, man is dead end, exoenteric cycle, mother can transmit to fetus. It's an obligate intracellular Corsidian parasite, first seen in uh, Gondi the rodent, toxon means arc. Morphology, you have a trophozoite or the tachyzoite, you have the uh, thick 
wall tissue cyst, which is the resting stage, which contains something called as bradyzoids. Okay, just please look at this extra word here. It contains bradyzoids. Then you have the oocyst, which contains sporocysts with sporozoids. This is the infective form to man, because this thing is seen only in an, uh, in cats and cat family, and they infect man. So this is the infective form, oocyst. Then. How do we get this infection? Ingestion of uh, contaminated food, congenital infection can happen. Clinical features, so many are there. It affects the brain, the liver, the heart, the spleen. And in AIDS patient, it can also additionally affect the eye, the gastrointestinal tract, pancreas, lungs. So it can cause toxoplasma, pneumonia. Remember, it is the most serious and fatal complication in AIDS. It can affect the eye ocular toxoplasmosis, chorioretinitis. In uh, congenital toxoplasmosis, again, there will be chorioretinitis, cerebral calcification, convulsions, deafness, blindness, mental retardation, microcephaly and hydrocephalus. Okay. So, guys, we are done with the clinical features, right? A revision, moving on. Treatment. Uh, Cotrimoxazole for prophylaxis for congenital infection, pyrimetha mine with sulfur diazine. Okay. Diagnosis, microscopy, detect the tachyzoids, tissues, antibody detection, IgM, IgG. Remember Sabin, Fieldman, dye test, all these specific words you have to write. Double sandwich, ELISA, you will do molecular diagnosis, PCR, imaging, others, skin test of Frenkel. That's all for now in uh, Toxoplasma Gundi. We will meet you in the next video. Bye-bye.